hello hello everyone how are you doing hope you all are well and okay and keeping safe you and your families okay so as usually you know we are following one of the most controversial case in jamaica recent history yes man the same one the vibes cartel and his co-accused case somehow it seems like the possibilities are endless it seems possible that he could walk free and then we are hearing word on the street that there is possible some um there is possible some witness or the other that the prosecution could bring forward no if that is the case that would be the main reason why the court could look into a retrial without that it would be a toss up 50 50 what happened next anyway let's get into the legal source the appeal court panel which is the next month rule on the acquittal or retrial of entertainer vibes cartel and his three co-accused still has a major concern following a response from the crown on the likely sentences to be given in a new trial the panel on tuesday reiterated concern that for at least two of the men there is danger that they could be prejudiced given the length of time already spent behind bars the issue was first raised by appeal court judge justice david fraser last thursday during submissions by acting director of public prosecutions dpp claudette thomas on arguments by the defense that the time lapse since the trial and the subsequent appeal is a sufficient factor to militate against the making of any order for a new trial looking at the length of time the various men were sentenced to in respect of the parole period and looking at the length of time they have already been in custody how does that factor in the question of delay there is if there is a retrial say at the earliest time they probably would have been in custody for 15 years by the time a retrial is to start justice fraser pointed out the minimum sentence if convicted would be 15 years so someone who has 25 years for example and has gone 15 how does that factor into what the court has to decide and balance the competing interests he asks then adija vibes cartel palmer and his co-accused sean storm campbell kahira jones and andre st john are accused of taking out clive lizard william on august 16 2011 after he failed to return to unlicensed firearm Palmer supposedly gave him to secure Williams was not been seen since and his body has never been found the prosecution cases that the correspondence and communication media taken as a whole with the evidence of the sole eyewitness prove the fact of the takeout the reason for the takeout the method of disposal of the body and the identity of at least one of the killers namely palmer in april 2024 carters was sentenced to life in prison with the eligibility of parole after serving 35 years his co-accused campbell jones and st john were also handed life sentences campbell and jones will be eligible for parole after serving 25 years while st john would be eligible for parole after serving 15 years in april 2020 following an appeal the men's parole time were reduced by two and a half years each 
On Tuesday, Thomas, in seeking to satisfy the court, said, There is the determinate sentence with a pre parole of not less than 10 years. When one considers this offense and the principles established in case law, we would urge on you that it is unlikely that these appellants will be offered that minimum mandatory of 15 years. Additionally, we submit that the court would have to take into consideration if there were to be a retrial and conviction, the period already spent in custody, and so it would be a determinate sentence that would be considered. A determinate sentence has a definite length and cannot be reviewed or changed by a parole board or any other agency. Appeal Court Judge Justice Marva MacDonald Bishop, who heads the panel, which also includes Justice Paulette Williams and Justice Fraser, was however quick to note in response to Thomas, you cannot retry someone and give them a higher sentence than they had received before. So let us say all of them got life, but the pre-parole minimum term varied. So you have to separate them now because if we send them back and they are to get a pre-parole period higher, that would prejudice them. When the acting DPP replied that, based on the circumstances of the case and the allegations, the prosecution's only answer to the panel is that it is unlikely that they would be given the minimum mandatory sentence. Justice McDonald Bishop said, while Palmer could not, could not be given the minimum and work out not prejudice, there are two that would stand to be prejudiced because of the length of time served in custody. When Thomas replies, the reality is we do not have an answer beyond the answer I just gave you. McDonald Bishop said, we have to look at it because credit for time served is a constitutional remedy for deprivation of liberty. So that is something we have to look at in the context of the two of them. They would have already practically served their sentences and they can't get any higher sentences. Defense Attorney John Clark's attempt to take the issue further by suggesting that a bill now being contemplated by Parliament to make the mandatory minimum parole period for murder 45 years could make matters worse for the men was however shot down by McDonald Bishop. Isn't there a principle from when we were back in law school that you cannot apply a law to a person that was not in force at the time he committed the offense unless the statute expressly state that it is retroactive but usually you can't the court would have to use a law that was in force at the time the offense was committed she declared when Clark persisted she said we raised it with Miss Thomas we raised it with Miss Thompson and she said the crown can say no more don't you see that as a gift learn to leave things alone palmer and his co-accused were in september of 2020 granted conditional leave to challenge their murder conviction before the judicial community before the judicial committee of the united kingdom privy council in march this year the apex courts squashed the murder convictions of the four and remitted the question of whether there should be a retrial to the local appeal court. Thompson and Tuzer said the prosecution would be ready with its case by September but was mindful that the court might be unable to do so before January next year. In the meantime, she said the Crown was convinced that the scales were heavily in favor 
of a retrial being ordered given the seriousness of the offence, the nature of the offence, the prevalence of the offence in our society, importantly the strength of the Crown's case, the fact that the witnesses available and the public interest require that matters be determined on their merit rather than being dismissed based on a technical blunder, said the acting DPP. When you come to consider whether an order should be made for a retrial, the overaching considerations is whether the appellants can be afforded a fair trial given all the factors we have addressed and we are saying there are sufficient safeguards in place to ensure that the appellants are afforded a fair trial. Also on Tuesday, Justice MacDonald Bishop said, the anticipated decision on whether or not to retry the men will come no later than July, when the court term is scheduled to end, noting that the question of a retrial is never an easy matter, especially when a serious offence has been committed and time has passed. She said, you have given us a lot to think about, adding that the court is mindful of all the issues, especially cartel health concerns. However, in a potential blow to the prosecution, the Court of Appeal indicated that granting bail may not be sufficient, it may not be enough to cure the appellant's right that has been breached. If Vibes Cartel and his co-accused are ordered a retrial, said presiding judge Justice Marva MacDonald Bishop, as the issue is not about getting bail, but it's about getting a trial in a reasonable time to further breach the rights of the appellants. Somehow to me, it seems possible that come by the end of July, Vibes Cartel may be a free man, but just know that we're talking about Jamaican and you know Jamaican have a thing where it do, they don't seem to care about people rights. You have some that do because we, we can't knock the judges because ex, uh, some of the judges they talk for truth, right and justice but with how we look at the system and what's been going on we are looking at it as it's possible they will come up with some encumbrances like where they are saying they have witnesses now when you think about going to court and if you're going to tell the judge you have witnesses it's going to cause them to look at it again but as the judge rightfully say even for them to put all of that together and so on it would basically the men will still be serving them time by the time them to go to trial, it would possible and for the trial to go on and so on, possibly going go well into the time where they don't serve them time for the, for the crime that they are held for, which is now really dismissed by the Privy Council. So, we're just going to have to play the wait game and see what will happen by the end of July. Anyway guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Anyway, please remember to like, comment and subscribe to my platform please. Love you all. Bye for now.